What does in the name of Yeshu mean? Note, this article explains the concept of in my name. If you are looking for evidence that our Lord's name is Yeshu, please see the article The True Name of the Savior. The phrase in the name of Yeshu or in my name is very common in the Bible, which in itself should prompt some investigation. I hope to show in this article that to do something in the name of our Lord means to do, 1. By His authority. 2. In His place. 3. For Him. 4. In the name of Yeshu. And He said to them, Go into all the world and proclaim the gospel to the whole creation. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved, but whoever does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will accompany those who believe, in my name they will cast out demons, they will speak in new tongues, they will pick up serpents with their hands, and if they drink any deadly poison, it will not hurt them, they will lay their hands on the sick, and they will recover. So then the Lord Jesus, after he had spoken to them, was taken up into heaven and sat down at the right hand of God. And they went out and preached everywhere, while the Lord worked with them and confirmed the message by accompanying signs. Mark 16 verses 15-20 He actually granted them power of attorney to act in His name, that is, with His authorization and for Him. In order to understand a specific example of the use of this term, during the analysis of the biblical text, it is necessary to check in what context it occurs and it is also necessary to check whether the translator has correctly rendered this formulation. This time, due to the large amount of material, I will limit myself to a brief review of places where the words in the name of Yeshu or in my name appear and only with selected examples will I provide a more extensive commentary. When taking up this topic, it should be remembered that there is a certain group of people who spread the view that the name itself is not important, that the name does not represent the person but the values that this person proclaims and therefore in their opinion different names can be used in different languages. Such a view leads to diminishing the significance of a specific name. Applying the ideology of relativism to the name of our Lord has further consequences. Such an attitude distorts the correct understanding of the condition necessary for salvation, which Paul reveals in the letter to the Romans 10 verse 13. For whoever calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. So if someone believes that each nation can have a different name by which they praise the Lord, they are acting contrary to what is written in Romans 10 verse 12. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek, for the same Lord is Lord of all, bestowing His riches on all who call on Him. Undermining the true name of Yeshu leads to a whole series of distortions of the Word of God. It works similarly to dominoes, when you knock one over, the rest fall by themselves. Meanwhile, Paul says something quite the opposite of the teachings that belittle the significance of the name of the Lord. Romans 10 verse 14. How then will they call on Him in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in Him of whom they have never heard? And how are they to hear without someone preaching? And how are they to preach unless they are sent? As it is written, How beautiful are the feet of those who preach the good news! Paul sees the need to preach so that others can also fulfill the condition of salvation which is to call on the name of Yeshu. The name of the Lord should therefore be the subject of the proclamation, should be part of the content that fills the good news. On closer examination, it turns out that the name of the Lord was indeed the teaching that was preached from the very beginning. Acts 8 verse 12 But when they believed Philip as he preached good news about the kingdom of God and the name of Yeshu Christ, they were immersed both men and women. When Philip met a certain official, he also preached about the name of the Lord, Acts 8 verses 36-37. As they traveled along the road, they came to some water and the eunuch said, Look, here is water. What can stand in the way of my being baptized? Philip said, If you believe with all your heart, you may. 
the eunuch answered, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. The early preaching focused primarily on the fact that the Son of God and His Anointed One is called Yeshu. After the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, Peter gave the testimony that we read about in Acts 2 verses 16 to 39. The end of the preaching went like this, Therefore let all Israel be assured of this, God has made this Jesus, whom you crucified, both Lord and Messiah. When the people heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the other apostles, Brothers, what shall we do? Peter replied, Repent and be immersed, every one of you, in the name of Yeshu Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. And you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. It is obvious to those who study this matter thoroughly that the name in the Holy Scriptures is a symbol of the person it represents. The person is more important, but the name represents him completely, hence the need to show respect to the name if we wish to respect the owner of the name. As proof that this is not my invention, but that an independent study of the Bible must lead to the conclusion that the name in the Holy Scriptures was very important, I recommend the article that is at the link, Name in the Bible. Name Mark 6 verse 14 King Herod heard about this, for Yeshu name had become well known. The above text is obvious and does not require translation, yet some people belittle the significance of the name, claiming that it was not the literal name that became famous, but Yeshu himself, as a person. Of course, yes. Only that the person Yeshu is represented by his name and when he becomes famous, his literal name also becomes famous. And vice versa. If you do not have your own identifier, i.e. your name with which you are identified, no matter how great your fame, no one will be able to identify you. The name is a sound symbol representing you. So the fact that a person is famous does not exclude the unique role that the name of that person plays. To understand this better, think about why the records of the famous singer Jerzy Michael are not sold in Poland. That is, his records are sold, only under a different name. No artist is promoted in other countries under other names, and yet every nation has its own names and equivalents of names. I type Jersey Michael into Google and Jersey Michael Wolodijowski, the hero of Sienkiewicz's trilogy, popped up. Of course, this Michael did not have the fame of a singer. The world worships its idols, taking care of the correct pronunciation and no one is bothered by the lack of knowledge of English. The world cares about the names of its idols, and let's remember that these are false gods put in place for the youth to worship. The word idol comes from Greek and literally means a god, or a minor god. Jersey Michael is George Michael. His name can be written in different ways, but it should be pronounced correctly, and after all, he is only a human being. He will not hear you when you say his name out loud. Acts 2 verse 38 Peter replied, Repent and be immersed, every one of you in the name of Yeshu Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. Meaning, by the authority of Yeshu Christ and as a substitute. The term be immersed shows that someone is doing the immersion, so we are not immersing ourselves in the name of Yeshu Christ, but someone is immersing us, someone who has the authority and acts in the name of Yeshu Christ, that is, as a substitute. Acts 3 verse 6 then Peter said, Silver or gold I do not have, but what I do have I give you. In the name of Yeshu Christ of Nazareth, walk. Meaning, by the authority of Yeshu Christ and as a substitute. If Yeshu Christ were present here, he himself would perform the healing, but since he is present through his representative, he performs the miracle in the name of his Lord. Acts 4 verse 10 then know this, you and all the people of Israel, it is by the name of Yeshu Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified but whom God raised from the dead, that this man stands before you healed. Meaning, by the authority of Yeshu. 
the messengers of the Lord by his authority and in his place healed the man. The credit and thanks belong to Yeshu because this happened by his authority, in his place and in accordance with his will. The messenger clearly ends with the words by him that this man stands before you healthy. Acts 4 verse 18 Then they called them in again and commanded them not to speak or teach at all in the name of Yeshu. A clear prohibition against referring to a specific name. This verse leaves no doubt that acting in the name of Yeshu is related to using, calling or invoking the name literally. You cannot act in the name of Yeshu, omitting the name itself. If we did so, we would be acting in accordance with the will of our Lord's opponents, which is clearly evident from the above example. Two thousand years ago, it was forbidden to refer to the name of Yeshu, and today we are told that it is not necessary, we can use substitute names. The opponents of Yeshu were bothered by the fact that, despite the fact that he was killed, his name is becoming more and more known and popular. They were convinced that it would be enough to kill the leader and the rest would disperse and the problem would disappear, Acts 5 verses 36 and 37. Such cases had already occurred before, so the Pharisees acted according to a proven method. Meanwhile, Yeshu was killed and he is becoming more and more famous. The Pharisees forbid referring specifically to this name. Certainly, if Peter and John had suggested another name, e.g. Yeshu the Pharisees would have nothing against them continuing to preach as long as they did not invoke the name of the one they had killed. Acts 5 verse 40 His speech persuaded them. They called the apostles in and had them flogged. Then they ordered them not to speak in the name of Yeshu and let them go. This verse is connected to the previous one, it is still the same event, so we can clearly see that it is about a literal invocation of the name of Yeshu and not some abstract concept of value. Acts 4 verse 30 Stretch out your hand to heal and perform signs and wonders through the name of your holy servant Yeshu. Meaning, miracles through the invocation of the name, Yeshu. A very interesting verse because it contains a prayer to God the Father asking for courage as God heals people through the name of His servant Yeshu. The disciples needed courage to speak this name out loud and publicly during the healings. This verse informs us that it is indeed God who heals and that He is currently doing it through the name, Yeshu, when spoken by authorized persons. This is in accordance with the announcement that God will exalt this name above every name, Philippians 2 verse 10. And also with the prophetic announcement of Isaiah, in his name shall the nations hope. Matthew 12 verse 21. It is absolutely pointless to try to convince people that the miracles were performed through the fame or teachings of our Lord. This name had to be mentioned in order for the miracles to occur. Acts 8 verse 16. Because the Holy Spirit had not yet come on any of them, they had simply been baptized in the name of the Lord Yeshu. Meaning, by the authority of Yeshu, in the place of and for Yeshu they were immersed and invoked by that name. Acts 9 verse 27. But Barnabas took him and brought him to the apostles. He told them how Saul on his journey had seen the Lord and that the Lord had spoken to him, and how in Damascus he had preached fearlessly in the name of Yeshu. Meaning, for Yeshu and concerning Yeshu, bringing glory to the name of Yeshu. Barnabas, referring to the power with which Paul preached in Damascus, gives him credibility. He claims that he spoke in the name of Yeshu which means that he must have received authorization to preach this name with sincere conviction, 1 Corinthians 12 verse 3. Romans 10 verse 9. Acts 10 verse 48. So he ordered that they be immersed in the name of Yeshu Christ. Then they asked Peter to stay with them for a few days. Meaning, by the authority and on behalf of Yeshu and also by referring to the name of Yeshu. Acts 16 verse 18. She kept this up for many days. 
Finally Paul became so annoyed that he turned around and said to the spirit, In the name of Yeshu Christ I command you to come out of her. At that moment the spirit left her. Meaning, by the authority and will of the Lord Yeshu. Acts 19 verse 5 On hearing this, they were immersed in the name of the Lord Jesus. Meaning, by the authority and will of the Lord Yeshu. Acts 19 verse 13 Some Jews who went around driving out evil spirits tried to invoke the name of the Lord Yeshu over those who were demon-possessed. They would say, In the name of the Yeshu whom Paul preaches, I command you to come out. This verse proves that casting out demons in the name of Yeshu involves saying the name out loud, but it also proves that the sound of the name itself has no magical power unless it is supported from above. People who did not have the support of Yeshu could not act on his behalf. Acts 19 verse 17 When this became known to the Jews and Greeks living in Ephesus, they were all seized with fear and the name of the Lord Yeshu was held in high honor. Literally, the name of Yeshu. The glory of the Lord was manifest in the glory of His name. 1 COR 1.10 I appeal to you, brothers and sisters, in the name of our Lord Yeshu Christ, that all of you agree with one another in what you say, and that there be no divisions among you, but that you be perfectly united in mind and thought. Sense. I exhort you by the name of the Lord. 1 COR 5 colon 4 So when you are assembled and I am with you in spirit, and the power of our Lord Yeshu is present. Sense, by the will of Yeshu. For Yeshu's sake, and because of the Lord Yeshu. 1 COR 6 11 And that is what some of you were. But you were washed, you were sanctified, you were justified in the name of the Lord Yeshu Christ and by the Spirit of our God. Meaning, by the authority of our Lord Yeshu. A very interesting verse. It follows that the Lord is represented by His name Yeshu and God is represented by His Spirit. Why is God not represented by His name? Another conclusion is that the Spirit of God works for the good of the name Yeshu. The Spirit of God cleansed sinners in the name of Yeshu. Philippians 2 verse 10, that at the name of Yeshu every knee should bow, in heaven and on earth and under the earth. The pronoun that indicates a specific name, not an abstract concept such as an idea or fame. Call 317. In whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Yeshu giving thanks to God the Father through Him. Meaning, representing the Lord Yeshu, by His authority, giving thanks to God the Father. An additional thought is that we turn to God to thank Him through Yeshu. When doing something by authority or in place, we must of course be careful not to do something that is not pleasing to our Lord. 2 Thess 1.12 we pray this so that the name of our Lord Yeshu may be glorified in you, and you in Him, according to the grace of our God and the Lord Yeshu Christ. Meaning, 2 Thess 3 colon 6 In the name of the Lord Yeshu Christ, we command you, brothers and sisters, to keep away from every believer who is idle and disruptive and does not live according to the teaching you received from us. Meaning, on the authority of Philemon 1 verse 9. Yet I prefer to appeal to you on the basis of love. It is as none other than Paul, an old man and now also a prisoner of Christ Yeshu. An interesting example that shows that if the apostles wanted to write in the name of abstract concepts, they would have done so because there was such a possibility without the need to refer to the name of the Lord. The Greek word dia, delta iota, is used here. 1 John 3 verse 23. And this is His command, to believe in the name of His Son, Yeshu Christ, and to love one another as He commanded us. Faith in the name of Yeshu was important because the name represents the Son of God Himself, so it is faith in the Son and not just in a name. Acts 4 verses 6-19.
Amas the high priest was there, and so were Caiaphas, John, Alexander, and others of the high priest's family. They had Peter and John brought before them and began to question them, By what power or what name did you do this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers and elders of the people, If we are being called to account today for an act of kindness shown to a man who was lame and are being asked how he was healed, then know this, you and all the people of Israel, it is by the name of Yeshu Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified but whom God raised from the dead, that this man stands before you healed. Yeshu is the stone you builders rejected which has become the cornerstone. Salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given to mankind by which we must be saved. When they saw the courage of Peter and John and realized that they were unschooled, ordinary men, they were astonished and they took note that these men had been with Yeshu. But since they could see the man who had been healed standing there with them, there was nothing they could say. So they ordered them to withdraw from the Sanhedrin and then conferred together. What are we going to do with these men? they asked. Everyone living in Jerusalem knows they have performed a notable sign, and we cannot deny it. But to stop this thing from spreading any further among the people, we must warn them to speak no longer to anyone in this name. Then they called them in again and commanded them not to speak or teach at all in the name of Yeshu. But Peter and John replied, Which is right in God's eyes, to listen to you, or to him. You be the judges. I looked for the phrase in my place in several translations of the Holy Bible and found that zero cases, literally zero. How is this thought expressed? Writing on my behalf. In my name. Matthew 24 verse 5. For many will come in my name claiming, I am the Messiah, and will deceive many. Meaning, by using my name. Mark 9 verse 37. Whoever welcomes one of these little children in my name welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me does not welcome me but the one who sent me. Meaning, by using my name. Mark 9 verse 39. Do not stop him, Yeshu said. For no one who does a miracle in my name can in the next moment say anything bad about me. Meaning, by using my name. Mark 16 verse 17. Here are the miraculous signs that those who believe will do. In my name they will drive out demons. They will speak in languages they had not known before. Meaning, by using my name, by my authority, in my presence. Prayer. John 14 verse 6. Yeshu answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. John 14 verses 13 to 14. And I will do anything you ask in my name. Then the Father will receive glory from the Son. 14 You may ask me for anything in my name. I will do it. John 16 verses 23 to 27. When that day comes, you will no longer ask me for anything. What I'm about to tell you is true. My Father will give you anything you ask for in my name. Until now you have not asked for anything in my name. Ask, and you will receive what you ask for. Then your joy will be complete. I have not been speaking to you plainly but a time is coming when I will speak clearly. Then I will tell you plainly about my Father. When that day comes, you will ask for things in my name. I am not saying I will ask the Father instead of you asking Him. No, the Father Himself loves you because you have loved me. He also loves you because you have believed that I came from God. Ephesians 5 verse 20 Always give thanks to God the Father for everything. Give thanks to Him in the name of our Lord Yeshu Christ. Meaning, by the authority of the Lord and also by calling on His name. John 14 verse 26. 
but the Father will send a friend in my name to help you. The friend is the Holy Spirit. He will teach you all things. He will remind you of everything I have said to you. Meaning, in my place. John 15 verse 16 You did not choose me. Instead, I chose you. I appointed you so that you might go and bear fruit that will last. I also appointed you so that the Father will give you what you ask for. He will give you whatever you ask for in my name. Meaning, by calling on my name. John 16 verse 23 When that day comes, you will no longer ask me for anything. What I'm about to tell you is true. My Father will give you anything you ask for in my name. Meaning, by calling on my name, that is, me. John 16 verse 24 Until now you have not asked for anything in my name. Ask, and you will receive what you ask for. Then your joy will be complete. Meaning, by calling upon my name, that is, me. John 16 verse 26 When that day comes, you will ask for things in my name. I am not saying I will ask the Father instead of you asking Him. Meaning, by calling upon my name, that is, me. For the name. Matthew 19 verse 29 Suppose anyone has left houses, brothers or sisters, father or mother, husband or wife children or fields for my sake will receive a hundred times as much, A.R., and will inherit eternal life. Meaning, for my name's sake. Acting for this name is acting for the Lord Himself, who bears this name. Acts 5 verse 41. The apostles were full of joy as they left the Sanhedrin. They considered it an honor to suffer shame for the name of Yeshu. Meaning, literally for the name's sake. The name represents a person, therefore suffering for the name's sake is suffering for that person. For his good or for his faithfulness. Acts 9 verse 16. For I will show him how much he must suffer for the sake of my name. Meaning, literally for the name and indirectly for Yeshua himself. Acts 15 verse 26 who have sacrificed their lives for the name of our Lord Yeshu Christ. The name represents a person, so sacrificing one's life for the name's sake is sacrificing one's life for that person. Acts 21 verse 13 Then Paul answered, What are you doing? Why do you weep and break my heart? For I am ready not only to be imprisoned, but also to die in Jerusalem for the name of the Lord Yeshu. Meaning, Paul is ready to sacrifice his life for the name of Yeshu. There is probably no greater value on earth for which it is worth giving up your life than the name of Yeshu the Anointed One. Of course, the name only symbolizes the Lord, but it does not change the fact that he is ready to die for the name. Romans 1 verse 5 through him we have received grace and our apostleship to bring about the obedience of faith among all the Gentiles on behalf of his name. Meaning, in order for the glory of the name. From this text it is clear that everything we do for the name of Yeshu is to bring him glory. How can you bring glory to Yeshu? You can only do this by exalting his name. In this case, it is gaining new people who call on the name of Yeshu. Hebrews 6 verse 10. For God is not unjust so as to forget your work and the love you have demonstrated for his name, in having served and continuing to serve the saints. Supporting those who serve the Lord Yeshu is showing love to the Lord himself and has the support of God. Supporting the saints, those who especially serve the Son of God, is called showing love to the name of Yeshu, or the Lord himself. Here we are reminded of the prophetic announcement of the Lord that whoever would help the least of the Lord's brothers showed him help, or love, Matthew 25 verses 31 to 46. 3 John 1 verse 7. For they have gone forth on behalf of the name, accepting nothing from the pagans. 
an interesting verse because the original words can be translated. 7. Pyro Gamero Tau Omicron Nu Mu Alpha Tau Omicron Xylanda Theta Omicron Nu. 7. For in the name of this name they went out. From such verses emerges the image of the first servants of the Master, who served him, showing respect to his name. Of course, they did so because this word symbolizes and represents the Lord Himself on earth. In itself, this word has no power. This name draws its power from the one behind it, the Son of God. Acts 15 verse 26 Men who have surrendered their lives for the name of our Lord, Yeshu Christ. Meaning, for the name of Yeshu. Dying for the name of Yeshu was actually being faithful to the Lord Himself. Matthew 10 verse 22 You will be hated by all for my name's sake, but he who endures to the end will be saved. Matthew 24 verse 9 Then they will deliver you up to be afflicted, and will kill you, and you will be hated by all nations for my name's sake. Mark 13 verse 13 you will be hated by all for my name's sake, but he who endures to the end will be saved. Hebrews 13 verse 15 Through him then let us continually offer up a sacrifice of praise to God, that is, the fruit of our lips, acknowledging his name. Our Lord's messenger John recorded commendations for some churches, emphasizing their fidelity to the name of Yeshu. Apparently, by the end of the first century, a trend of apostasy had already become apparent in the matter of the name. Revelation 2 verse 3 I am also aware that you have persisted steadfastly, endured much for the sake of my name, and have not grown weary. Suffering for the name's sake means persecution for those who profess the name of Yeshu. Revelation 2 colon 12 13 To the angel of the church in Pergamum write the following, this is the solemn pronouncement of the one who has the sharp double-edged sword. I know where you live, where Satan's throne is. Yet you continue to cling to my name and you have not denied your faith in me, even in the days of Antipas, my faithful witness, who was killed in your city where Satan lives. Faithfulness to the name is next to faithfulness to the faith itself. Both formulations occur as parallels. Revelation 3 verse 8 I know your deeds. Behold, I have set before you an open door as a gift, which no one can shut, because you, though you have little power, have kept my word and have not denied my name. There are several ways to deny the name, for example by denying Yeshu or changing the name to another, more or less similar to the previous one. Acts 4 verse 7 they set them in the midst and asked, By what power or in whose name have you done this? This question shows that referring to the name of Yeshu has a legal aspect. Today we would hear, By what authority have you done this? In the past, the question was asked in whose name. Whatever you did could get away with it if you did it on the orders of someone great. The disciples of the Son of God did not seek their own glory so they did everything in the name of Yeshu the Anointed. I hope that after considering so many instances of using the words in Yeshu's name or in my name they become clear and understandable. These words are the best way to express the deep thought behind which lies the action with the authority, on behalf of our Lord Yeshu.